people of the internet, it's Amanda and for today's video, we're here to talk about Ito or if we're going by the official English title, it's Tapestry starring Sudo Masaki and Komatsu Nana. Now, I've talked about this briefly in my previous video where I talked about their other film Drowning Love slash Obarero Knife that I've always wanted to see this film and given the recent wedding news, it, it really fueled me more to just go for it and see it. And now that I've done so, there's definitely a lot to say about this film. Now, before that, they're also joined by Eikora Nana, Saito Takumi, Yamamoto Mizuki, Narita Ryo, Nikaido Fumi, Takasugi Mahiro, and so many other actors in this film. And I feel like that definitely added to the layers and the charm and the appeal of the narrative in general, which I'll be discussing more later into the video. But um, I feel like overall this film is it makes it into one of my very few favorites when it comes to these types of like treatments and again we'll be discussing that more later on but basically the main premise of Ito so Ito directly translated is a thread um, which is in terms of like a bigger reference to the string of faith or the red thread of faith if you will um, and the um, one song that repeatedly appears in this particular film is um, Nakajima Miyuki's song that where the lyrics also kind of like um, treads into what the film was basically about and again later on I'll be talking more about how music also plays a huge role in wh why and how this film is to be experienced and yeah but with that said let's just get down to it usual when it comes to these types of videos i'll give a brief synopsis of what the film is about first so Suda masaki plays the role of ren while komatsu nana plays the role of aoi um they th their characters were both born in 1989 and they first met when they were 13 years old in a fireworks festival um and the thing is it's that case of you know falling in love during your youth and have sharing this very like this close bond with someone and and having you know the flirting feelings of just a youthful kind of love if you will but then something happens and um they they got separated temporarily at first but then ren goes to find aoi and then he discovers that aoi is being treated poorly by her mother at the same time her mother's boyfriend and so during his visit he asks her to run away with him and so they did um overnight um however someone spotted them in the vacation house cabin thing that they tried to hide in and they were reported and they were immediately found the next day um they it was such a dramatic and emotional moment during their youth that they both like ren wanted to protect aoi so bad but because of certain circumstances they had to let go of each other in that particular moment and if that they've never seen each other again um years when tragic incident that happened between them where you know they know that like ren knows that he's um he sort of like wanted to save her but he couldn't and and then there's aoi who also couldn't do anything about it then you know just also go her separate way so it's definitely that kind of young love that scars you um and not exactly just in a very shallow manner but because of this thing where you something that you would carry with you years later and that's exactly what happened to them now two of their friends who were with them when they met in the fireworks festival um years later got married and because of that they saw each other again during the ceremony um they had a brief exchange where they they casually you know talked about each other uh talk to each other about you know happenings and stuff like that um but they eventually had to go their separate ways again and when um aoi left um there was a certain pain that both of them felt in terms of being separated again despite the fact that you know it was a very brief shared moment that they had seeing each other again after so many years um 
and it's the same thing with Ren as well because he saw that Aoi was already with someone else um, and so he had to move on from that he, he thought that he also had to move on from those painful memories that they sh pa both painful and happy memories that they shared back when they were younger um, on his end so there's um, so for Ren and Aoi both of them are in a relationship and the relationships are not exactly like and again this is one thing that i love about this film is that they never played off the partners of either the characters as villainous like they it was finding someone you know in your life that you're you're you also love in a different kind of love than say them being each other's first loves and it, there's a certain like genuineness in both the relationships that they've had and um it was never about you know just just sticking with this person because you can't be with your first love it's never about that um many moments between both either of their relationships show that they absolutely care and love for the current partners that they're with um it's just that those things so for Aoi, it didn't work out really well, but it wasn't because of negative factors. It just didn't work out for certain reasons. And then for for um, Ren, it worked out quite well in terms of his relationship with um, Kaori, who is his partner. Play. She was she got terminally sick, and eventually she died. So again, there was no antagonistic vibe in terms of the relationships that they've had it's not like um they were being drawn to each other or they think about each other because the current relationships that they had are not satisfactory but it was really more of the idea that they they are leading different lives from each other and but those kinds of lives are as genuine as they can get as well um now for aoi she's gone through so many different things after her relationship she went to singapore she she um met up with a friend they done multiple jobs until they started to establish um what they call this like their own nail salon they met um takasugi mahiro there so um again it was like so many years of of hard work and putting and making yourself like whole in a way in terms of how things are going and then for Ren on the other hand he was he's working um he's working creating cheese and one of his aspirations is to create cheese that would be that would be at par in like a world or a global level so both of them are working on their own thing um and yeah and it was really more of like circumstances where they keep on like meeting each other and seeing each other and but another thing that i like about this film is they they never really went with like for example just to show that these two people are meant to be in between their current relationships they would cheat um because they're the ones who are meant to be together like that didn't happen at all in this film and again it's one of the reasons why i love the storytelling of it, it is because it just focused on how their lives no matter how separate they think things are somehow again and it falls into the idea of ito or, or the thread of fate where they're still connected to each other like even if they don't see each other like there's so many circumstances showing that their paths would almost cross but then it doesn't um and again i feel like that's the beauty of this film is that it never antagonized anyone it merely showed that no matter how many detours you take um and it's possible for you to have different kinds of loves in a way but if you're meant to be with with a certain someone like that would happen and it doesn't have to be forced or it doesn't have to be because you 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 find yourself in a toxic place over and over 
just so you would realize that this other person is right for you it wasn't like that at all it was merely just the idea of no matter how long it would take if you can if if it happens and you will find your your way back to the right person or the right place and i think that's the charm and the beauty of this film um initially i thought of like the whole concept of the english film love rosie starring um sam claflin and and lily collins but then at the same time like that one it had themes where both their partners were kind of like toxic and everything like that but for this one it's really not like that at all like this film again is that they were able to establish relationships that are healthy and healthy for them and that relationships that they wanted to nurture as well and it wasn't like trying to antagonize other people just for the sake of reinforcing that these two characters were meant to be together so i think that's one of the like the overarching themes that i absolutely love about this film and that's why i feel like it's also it's also good storytelling to be able to like pull something something like that off um another thing that i also like about this film now let's talk about elements so another like in reference to another film starring suda masaki that i've reviewed just recently um i think that was a what, what was the title of this of that movie um the he made a beautiful bouquet uh, where he stars with Ari murakasami um it uses certain pop culture phenomenon or like news related stuff to tell us the, the to make it relatable for the audience in terms of the time frame like for example for this one since it shifts in different um time periods like 2011 then it jumps back to the 80s and then it jumps to late into the 2000s and stuff like that so it uses certain news bites or certain music or certain pop culture references to be able to like show us what time period we're watching just in case we're losing track of it i think in terms of the wardrobe um they also did a good job in terms of 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 weaving small trends into the costuming of the characters just so it adds a little bit more authenticity in terms of how each scene was being shown on screen like for example i remember um i remember when it was around the two like 2010s um uh, so, uh, Komatsu Nana's character was wearing a dress over flare jeans and that was really like a like a, a thing at the time or something like that so yeah I really really like that detail and again um, as I mentioned like pop culture music and stuff like that music plays a massive role in terms of um, how this film was told because and not just music but also the way that it 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 does um, recurring references from past parts of the films to certain parts of the films to show changes in a way like for example for um for narita rio's character so he he got divorced and then he meets another like he gets another girlfriend and then later on into the story um we see that the dynamic between the relationship is massively changed from the first time like when they were new in the relationship versus when they were long into the relationship and even and it shows that you know sometimes certain places certain things certain like even songs they never change because they're part of a certain time period or they're part of a certain part of our lives um, and even in friendships, like for example, you remember a point like you're you're with your friend, and there's so many things that you've gone through that sometimes um, things and memories feel like they just happened yesterday. But at the same time, so many things have also happened, and I feel like this film definitely did a good job in terms of of capturing time like that and memories and changes like that. And I really really like how how that is portrayed in terms of inserting like songs or certain details into the story um, that plays a huge part into how the entire thing was being told um, there's w there's a particular line in this film that I absolutely love as well and it's um, it's the line that Eiko Renane's character taught um, their like uh, Yui which is um, the which is um, her character Kaori and Ren's daughter so she told her that um, it 
it doesn't like you don't have to be a great person if you see someone who's crying or grieving you have to be a person who would be the first to give them a warm hug and i absolutely love that line because again this film is so brilliant in terms of creating recurring references that would pay off into the narrative sometime in the narrative and it doesn't just leave and those kinds of like little details really build up on the emotional value of how you're perceiving something um while you're watching it and again i think the final detail that i absolutely love about this film is in terms of the fireworks so the entire thing covers events during the Heisei era, but during the time that where the film was about to end, um, it was Japan welcoming the Reiwa era, which is um, in 2019. And because there's so many things happening, um, we never really know if like Aoi or Ren would catch up to each other because they kept on like missing each other when they were trying to like look for each other. But then when they saw each other again, fireworks happen because of the festivities but then at the same time we also know the significance of fireworks in this story um because again that's when their relationship started back when they were 13 years old so again these types of like details and the way things sort of like work and stuff so i think this film is brilliantly directed brilliantly acted brilliantly written at the same time the importance of hands or letting go and then focusing on shots of like hands is really played a really huge part in this film because again like i remember like their first encounter ren and aoi's first encounter was him i was her giving him a band-aid because he he got wounded um, and then that's their first like touch and then eventually when they were trying to like not let go of each other because they don't want to be separated after they they attempted to run away again with the hands thing um, when when um, Aoi's character was having this moment with Yamamoto Mizuki's character um, and they had this like thing where initially she wanted she told her that i don't want to be protected i want to be the protector they were holding hands and then at the moment where they had their fight or they lost each other there was again an emphasis in terms of 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 this of on the hands only the hands of of aoi letting go of um yamato mizuki's character's um hand and when um when aoi caught up the ren and that final moment again it put emphasis like the the, the camera movement the, dire the directional um the directional choice to put emphasis on on her grabbing his hand is again there so those little details i absolutely love it because it really does so much in terms of again storytelling and everything and i feel like overall this film did a good job in terms of creating that like in, it has a very not not really linear considering you know how there's a lot of back and forth between the timelines and everything but it's trying to tell a very straightforward story and it was able to do so because of the effective writing um and at the same time like even if you go back and forth in terms of like time frames and stuff like that given the references that were in there that audiences can relate to in terms of of what time period you're in or era that you're in it works so well and overall it really really created this entire film that you know that feels very satisfying until it's until the credits start rolling now with that said tell me down in the comments below now do i recommend this film absolutely i mean if you can't tell yet with just the amount of like passion that i have in terms of pointing out the details about this film like yes absolutely go ahead and watch it um if you have any thoughts about this film that you would also want to talk about or if you have any other recommendations for me stuff like that tell me down in the comments below if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and if you're new to my channel and you would want to hear more from me please hit subscribe thank you so much for watching this video and i hope to see you again soon in a new one